Meanwhile, a proposed bill to grant amnesty to looters is generating discussion across the country. The bill is sponsored by an Eboni state member of the House of Representatives, Linus Okori, and he joins me live now from Abuja. It's good to have you join us on the news at this time. Uh, tell us more about the background of this bill and how you, uh, you think it will curb corruption. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Um, my pleasure to be with you today. Good morning, Nigerians. Um, let me correct. This is not a bill to grant amnesty to looters. That uh, is a concept that has um, tended to disconfigure the noble intentions of the bill. It is a bill to recover all on all, uh, uh, funds uh, belonging to Nigerians, Nigeria and Nigerians, that remain out there in private hands with companies, with individuals, whether within Nigeria or outside Nigeria. And the background indeed is, we all know the situation we find ourselves in the country today. We find a situation where we are unable to meet basic responsibilities of government because of lack of resources, lack of funds. We have to borrow today, the this year's budget is on, uh, um, uh, on a deficit of about 2.3 trillion, as a debt service about 1.5 trillion, and we are going to borrow a lot more than we have borrowed over time. Yet we have the largest budget in the history of Nigeria. So this bill is intended and is uh, to bring everybody, increase the tax net, and bring everybody who has money outside the system that belong to Nigeria, whether as tax unpaid, whether as uh, money that is in homes or wherever they are, but you have not declared your income to the inland revenue. You come forward and declare them and be given opportunity to be saved from the stringent condition that exists in the law. And incidentally, just two weeks after introducing it beyond the floor of the House, the acting president signed executive order number four, which basically attends and deals with the same issues of bringing people to come forward and pay up to the inland revenue and go get revenue and be given immunity. I call it amnesty. The presidency called it immunity. This is the situation, and I would like that Nigerians understand that it is not a bill for looters. It is a bill for anybody, however it is, that has not declared income and to the Inland Revenue Authorities to come forward and do so. But the question is, what is income? Income, it could be from your, your when you pay your salaries, when you do businesses, when you run trade, but any money that comes to anybody is income. It is only when you determine the integrity of that money that you choose to say whether it is legal, legitimate or illegitimate. So clarify and for let us. Me point out. Clarify. The prosecutorial process, okay. which is the courts. Okay, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay, the prosecutorial, okay, the prosecutorial process, which is the courts. We all have a story, we all have experiences. Daily, even those who are taken to court on basis of no payment of tax or even on basis of corruption, are being left off the hook because of technical uh, uh, issues or poor, uh, uh, poor prosecution. The institutions also that manage uh, these systems have not bailed out Nigeria. The Inland Revenue, for instance, has the mandate and has the authority by law. They can check people's means and lifestyle and determine what, what you have filed is in tandem with your lifestyle. This is not done. The ICPC Act gives mandate and authority mm. to uh, 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 the implementers mm. to check the money you spend and the life you live and put a query upon you. It is not done. Right. So these institutions also have not done well enough to bail Nigeria out All of right. the situation. Thank now you I want you much. to clarify for us if uh, what your, your bill's position on Nigerians that can just come forward with large amounts of money, are you saying they should not be investigated as, as to how they accumulated their wealth? And then what happens to those that are already being uh, investigated or prosecuted now? Okay, thank you very much. Um, as a little background, um, Oath Farm, which is an international uh, financial and, uh, uh, body, has said that Nigeria loses about 12% of the GDP annually to illicit financial flows. Mm -hmm. And this includes tax evasion and corruption. Uh, this put in quantum fi in figure for people to understand 
uh, is about $50 billion per annum. The budget for this year, which is the highest we've ever had, is $24 billion. That tells you that, uh, uh, let me just put uh, that figure of $50 billion is how much you need to clean up the whole of Niger Delta. You need one trillion naira only, three billion dollars to settle North East. So what the bill actually is saying is a recovery bill, and it is a bill looking backwards from the day it is passed. Only those who have not declared their incomes are affected, not those who are moving forward. Are so you yes, saying? Are you the saying they should not be investigated people, when they come forward? Is that yes, what you're saying? They should not no, be investigated saying, as to saying, how they got yeah, their yeah, wealth. Yes, we are saying that if you come forward, uh, if you come forward, voluntarily declare all you owe, all you have, and pay the tax, uh, duties or tax on it, that you should be granted that immunity from further investigation on that score. And Except if, if you have not declared all. If that but happens, in court. okay. If, if that happens, court, Linus. If that happens you. for those public officials that. Uh, that have been seen to um, embezzle money that were meant that was meant for probably um, IDPs, for instance. How does this give closure to the victims? Yes, the, the, the question is those public officials that have been seen but have not been convicted, if you remember. And the question here is if conviction were what it should be, you go to court within a reasonable time, you get conviction and get restitution. For those people, the IDPs and people who are suffering, it is a different ball game. But you find that these people, the IDPs still suffer, more people suffer, you don't, put, you don't get a conviction for them, they still keep the money. And we find our schools rotting, our hospitals rotting. So the question is, what do we do? Do we remain uh, prosecuting them with, and then they keep going free, using the same money to up, uh, obstruct the system and get out of it, or technical reasoning with lawyers and get out of the court. All they right. keep the money, the IDPs continue, mm. and Nigerians keep suffering. All right, Linus, you know that this, your bill, is generating mixed reactions across the policy. Uh, what's your stance on if the government actually grants the immunity or amnesty, like you say, but Nigerians decide to take these people to court for them to be investigated as to how they got their wealth? Yes, I, 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 I'm actually very pleased that you're generating this level of uh, mixed reaction. That what it's supposed to be because what, anything that is not usual, that is not common, should generate that, such a, 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 a controversy. But the thing is that if government grants such amnesty by law, you can no longer take them to court on that score. So that is the issue why it is law. And that's why I was trying to refer to the executive order already issued, which is just an order. That same order as we speak, it between everything you are asking me about. Because if these people be investigated, remember they don't do it in their names. They go through companies. If those companies go forward now and declare taxes and pay, it, they are granted uh, immunity already by this executive order. And unfortunately, it is not a law. It can be shut down just like Trump orders were shut down. What we are saying is that my bill must not be passed the way I proposed it. But it's a talking point and a standing point. Mm. There's something we call a uh, uh, public hearing and stakeholder engagement, which is what I'm doing now, to ex excite intention and attraction of all Nigerians and stakeholders. So that if this bill passes second reading, they can come forward with better amendments and better correction so that we get the format that can serve the interest of Nigerians. But to say we should not discuss it when the institutions and the courts and the legal process, not mm. the courts, have not been able to let us recover what we are losing or what we have lost. Mm. I think that we'll be shooting Nigeria in the leg. And oh. if we allow this uh, executive order to remain, anybody mm. can go to court and shoot it down and we lose both ways. It needs to be codified through a law. That's what we are proposed All and right. that what we are proposed. All right, Linus Okori would have to leave it here for now because of time. I'm glad you know how controversial the bill sounds. But of course you say it's a talking point. Thank you very much for your time with us here on CVC News. Thank you very much.